Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, we're going to be talking about Ryzen 7000, specifically clock frequencies, specifications, and also the release date, and then discussing some very interesting information concerning NVIDIA's RTX 4070, aka AD104. There's not only been some interesting leaks on Twitter, but also I've been hearing some very intriguing things from my own sources. And of course, we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's start things out with Ryzen 7000. As I'm sure everyone knows at this point, it is going to of course be on a new platform using the AM5 socket. And it's going to be a very interesting couple of months actually in technology. We have a plethora of products which are going to launch from NVIDIA, AMD, and of course Intel. With AMD going to launch... Uh, well, for the consumer-facing side anyway, products like Narve 31 and Ryzen 7000. We have Wrapped Lake from Intel, as well as their discrete GPUs, and of course RTX 40 from NVIDIA. But it seems like the actual release date, according to WCCF Tech, is going to be September 15th. Now, if you've been watching the video, uh, sorry, the channel for the last uh, couple of videos, I don't remember which video I actually leaked this in, but I also mentioned it was the 15th of September. And yeah, it does seem, according to WCCF Tech, like this is actually the date. So their information basically coincides with mine. However, they do have a little more information than what I do. And they've also got kind of the whole announcement dates and everything like that. So long story short, the announcement is going to be this month, as I'm sure many of you would have guessed. Uh, we're looking at the 29th of August. Reviews will go live on the 13th of September, of course. And again, the launch itself will be on September 15th. Honestly, I think it's going to be very interesting. I've been hearing a lot of dates for Intel's Raptor Lake. There's actually been some rumors I've been hearing that there may actually be a delay in the launch of Raptor Lake. I'm just mentioning it here because, although I don't really 100% believe it, there have been an awful lot of details that even into Intel's Meteor Lake has also seen a delay as well. I'm probably going to discuss this more in an upcoming video, maybe tomorrow or the day after, as I'm doing a little bit of due diligence. So I want to discuss us more about Intel's graphics situation and yeah that's kind of a whole kettle of fish and I don't really want to get into it too much in this video because I do feel like I need to make a dedicated video on it let's just make let's just say it that way but moving on to well the 7950X which of course is going to be a 16 core Zen 4 part for the AM5 platform now this thing is going to be really fast <laughs> Spinning it mildly. According to, again, WCCF Tech, as well as EX Preview, we are looking at 16 cores, 32 threads, with up to 5.67 gigahertz, excuse me, and it can boost up to 230 watts. We know how AMD's kind of, you know, energy figures work, uh, which is kind of a complicated topic. So that's around 800 megahertz over the previous generation. Now, 5.7 gigahertz for the 7950X and um, on the other hand, the 12 core processor has actually got a higher base clock. So we're looking at 4.7 gigahertz for the 7900X. So that's basically 1000 megahertz faster again than its predecessor. But intriguingly, the boost frequency is a little slower. So it's going to just be 5.6 gigahertz. You know, just not very fast at all, really. Meanwhile, the 7700X has 8 cores, 16 threads, 5.4 gigahertz for its boost frequency. Base is 4.5. Is TDP remains the same, 105 watts. And then, of course, the 7600X is going to be boosting to 5.3 gigahertz. Again, you can see these specifications on screen yourself, but a lot of them do kind of make sense. And honestly, the specs are quite close to what myself and others have been leaking for a while. Obviously, at the end of the day, these are not official specifications from AMD. 
For all we know, the processor could launch and it could hit like 2 megahertz. Obviously, that's just completely ridiculous. But you guys get the point. We'd already seen AMD show off quite early engineering samples a while ago, running at like, you know, over 5 gigahertz. So we know that the chips are quite capable. Now, I've also been hearing from a few sources that if you get really lucky and the gods of overclocking or computer tweaking smile upon you, you can actually get 6 gigahertz. Now, I want to stress, I don't believe this is going to be all samples, and it seems to be, if you start messing around with voltage slash frequency curves, um, again, I'm quite early on this information, I don't know how true it is, but a couple of people have told me the same thing, I don't think it's going to be all core, it seems to be, you know how AMD's processors work, you know, when only a few threads are, you know, kind of loaded up, blah 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 blah, but ultimately, that's what I've been hearing, so if you get quite lucky in, you know, the silicon lottery, furthermore, you also have, you know, the time to mess around, and start messing around with, you know, voltage frequency curves, you know, undervolt the processor, all of that stuff, then you can probably get high 5 gigahertz, maybe 6 gigahertz. Again, I do not know how common this is. I would not go into this saying 6 gigahertz, uh, Ryzen 7000 confirmed, because ultimately, if you overclock any processor, yeah, you guys get the idea. However, with that said, it will be quite interesting... <laughs> because Raptor Lake is allegedly going to be similar in clock frequency. Now, whether it's, you know, 100 megahertz, either way, doesn't really matter. It's going to be very interesting to do some comparisons on scaling, um, especially when, technically speaking, Intel has a multi-thread advantage in terms of cores, so it's going to be very interesting to see how Intel, AMD, not only market the processor, but price the processor, and just overall... Um, I think it's going to be an interesting generation. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of copium online um, in terms of how reviews are conducted. And honestly, I think that reviews are going to have to be, and I've mentioned this a couple of times now, I think reviews are going to have to be um, perhaps done a little differently for this generation of CPUs and GPUs. Um, there's going to be a lot of... Uh, discussion going forward i think with rtx 40 rtx 50 and so on with the you know kind of next generation of products speaking of rtx 40 though let's discuss the 4070 now of course ultimately the 4070 is going to be a cut down variant it's going to be utilizing the ad 104 i'm going to get into the specs in just a moment i just want to mention though that depending on my sources at the moment the 1490 is obviously almost assured at this point this year. Nothing new there. I'm not exactly, you know, like giving you new information. 4090 is launching this year. Woohoo, go me. However, the 4080, I don't know. I've had some people tell me that yes, this year. Others say no, it's going to be next year. Personally, and I stress this is personal opinion, I think it's going to be this year. But the 4070 seems much more likely to launch at some point next year. I don't know the specific release date. If I had to, you know, kind of place a bet at a guess, I'm probably going to say it's February or March. I am not basing this on my own sources, though. I've just... Um, been told by sources it will be next year, but I haven't been given a specific date. So it could be January 1st, for all I know. But I don't think RTX 4070 is going to be this year. There are a number of reasons behind it. It's not that the Silicon's had some major problem. It's not like, you know, the bias issues, driver issues, any of that stuff. It's basically, and you guys probably know what I'm going to say, it's just that cards like, of course, the 3080 and other GPUs are starting to sell out now. NVIDIA need to just clear the inventory and ultimately speaking if just hypothetically speaking and again i'm just giving an example in pricing but hypothetically speaking um nvidia don't want too many products on the shelves which are going to be cramming um, inventory and of course pricing i do believe that the 4090 is going to be similar in pricing to the um 3090 i think it's going to be a little more um but I don't think it's going to be like, you know, 2,000 US dollars. That's what I've heard. I've heard it's going to be somewhere between the 3090 and 3090 Ti. With this said, pricing information this early is kind of... It's a roll of the dice. You know, you guys know that prices can literally change until, you know, a day or something before launch. So don't really take that with too much uh, faith. 
ultimately Nvidia will let us know. However, let's go on to the specifications because this is much more interesting. The highlight here is Kopitai 7 Kimi has basically said that the specifications have increased. Predominantly, this is a revolving around the memory configuration. Uh, you can see it on screen yourself regarding this. I don't really need to say much. You can, again, see quite easily what has changed. But the highlight here is that Time Spy Extreme is sitting around 11,000 points, and that's at 300 watts. Now, interestingly, one of my sources who has given me pretty good information, actually, previously, including some Time Spy Extreme scores for the 4090, which seem to be accurate, they actually got uh, reached out to me and told me that there are actually samples within NVIDIA, um, and they are basically hitting around 12,000 points. I won't mention the specific score, but it seems to be higher than what the score Copa T7 here is mentioning. Furthermore, it's at a lower TDP. I was told that it's achieving this at just 250. Now, the problem, A, information could be wrong, and B, is this because this is like the quality of the silicon gods, and is it achievable for the vast majority of silicon and so on and so on? It's really hard to know, guys. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, the 4070 doesn't seem so far along in the production cycle as, for example, the 4090. I think AIBs have either, depending on whom I've asked, they've either just got the 4070 boards to start testing or they're getting them very soon within the next couple of weeks. Information there seems to be kind of all over the place, so... I know, uh, I guess it's uh, Schrodinger's 4070. That was a really, really bad analogy, but you get the idea. Um, I think the 4070 actually could be a really intriguing card. If the scores are accurate, it basically stomps the 3080 and, well, pretty much everything from the previous generation. It's going to be fast, like, damn. Um, it's all about pricing. And, you know, between you and I and, you know, anyone else watching this video. I have not been this excited about GPUs in a long time. And don't get me wrong, RDNA 2, it tickled me in nice places. Um, because mostly of Infinity Cache, like the Infinity Cache and the fact that AMD actually had, you know, ray tracing and all that jazz. And also, it gave us kind of an insight into the next generation consoles. And I think that it, it was what AMD needed at the time. And the RTX 30 series... I think, while it didn't bring any major new features over the 20 series, it also kind of symbolized, A, the fact that the cards were now really capable with ray tracing, you know, especially if you're using DLSS, um, you know, and the kind of maturity of not only the silicon, but also the software, which, as you all know, is kind of important. But, um, you know, ultimately, the launch was pretty cool. Don't get me wrong, I'm quite a big fan of both the RTX 30 and RDNA 2 based GPUs. However, this generation, I think, it's really exciting me. I, I genuinely have not been this excited for a long ass time. And there are a lot of reasons behind that. Um, you know, I'll maybe talk about this more in another video, but I, I think the fact that we've actually got some really intriguing technology um on all of the cards i think there's a lot of mystery especially for like narve you know well all of the rdna free based gpus but also just hypothetically even if the performance figures of rtx 40 and rdna 3 are overblown by let's say 10 20 even 30 percent we are looking at a monumental leap in performance and ultimately speaking you know rtx 4090 great but it's a lot of cash. However, a 4060, um, you know, a 4070, an RX 7600, 7700, it's quite achievable by many people. And this could push widespread adoption of, you know, ray tracing and other features um, and high, uh, high refresh rate gaming to people on a more sensible budget. And again, you know, while myself, you know, I'm a lucky asshole, I basically get crap for free. Not always, but, you know, I do get sent crap for free sometimes. A lot of people don't. <laughs> and uh, I do know what it's like to look at the card and you're just like, holy crap, this thing is fast. And then you're just looking at your bank account like, sadness, <laughs> lots and lots of sadness. And you're just like, okay, 
Well, maybe if I eat, like, cans of beans for the next two months, I can maybe afford it. But yeah, you guys know what I mean. Like, you know, cards are bloody expensive. And ultimately speaking, um, it's going to be very interesting to see what is actually going to happen over the next uh, couple of couple of years in tech. I actually i am very excited. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like on the video and also subscribe. Hopefully the camera this time doesn't get corrupted. That would be brilliant. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.